a pox on both their houses, including the White House. Both parties have been horrible in this debate. There have been occasional bright spots and openings that I'll mention in just a minute. But generally, we're really in a bad place on what I think is the nation's most serious problem. This truly threatens the future of the country. And the especially frustrating part about it for me is that everybody knows what the solution is. We're going to raise taxes, we're going to cut spending, and we're going to make some procedural reforms to try to lock in as much as possible the kind of Congress that we have, the solution that we arrive at so that they have to meet it. And I don't think there are any other choices. I mean, there are lots of variability between those three things, but that's the answer. It's hard to get there, but we have to do it. Now, probably the most controversial part of this is increasing taxes. I have lots of former Republican colleagues uh, who have talked to me about this issue in the most delightful possible ways. <laughs> so let me lay out, I'm at Brookings, and I believe in logic and reason and evidence, and so let me say, here's why we have to increase taxes. First of all, every big deal, almost in the history of Washington, has been a compromise. Both sides have to give something. Otherwise, a democratic government doesn't work. So you start off with the, most, the broadest possible argument. The second thing is, we have 10 to 11,000 baby boomers like me retiring every day. Virtually all of them are going to get Social Security and Medicare. We cannot run the government on the same number re amount of revenue that we had in the past. Now, we can cut. We can't keep going the way we're going. We will have to cut spending for sure. But to think that you can do what Romney has done and said, well, 20 percent is the limit, or some Republicans say 18 percent is the limit, 18 percent of GDP, that's not going to work. We need additional revenues. Third, Republicans have had plenty of chances to cut spending. And they not only didn't cut spending, we fought two wars that have cost us on the order of $3 trillion so far. And we increased Medicare, just what we need, more benefits for the elderly. What a wise thing that was. And that cost us $50 billion a year in increasing. So it's kind of hard to think that the Republican Party is going to slash spending when the record would indicate otherwise. Another point is a Republican almost philosophy has been starve the beast. You know, they can't control Democrat spending. They never say their own spending, but that should count too. So they're going to starve the beast. They're going to cut taxes. And when we don't have revenue, we won't spend it. Well, that has been an utter, complete, absolute fiasco because what they taught politicians and the public, I'm afraid, is you can have all kinds of benefits and not pay for them. They've conditioned the country to believe we can get all kinds of stuff and we don't have to pay for it. And finally, we live in a democracy. Poll after poll show the, the public expects progress on this issue. They expect compromise. In many polls, they even a majority would favor or would favor tax increases in a balanced package. They say they want a balanced package. So this is the case for why taxes have to increase. Now, there also have to be spending cuts, to be sure. And the Democrat Party has taken an equally unreasonable position, or many Democrats have, that we're not going to cut uh, either Social Security or Medicare. We are going to cut Medicare for sure, and probably Social Security, but Medicare has got to be cut. Uh, we're now spending 5.6% of our GDP on Medicare, on all health benefits. Medicare is the biggest one, but Medicaid and so forth. By, uh, by 2040, we'll spend 11%, more than twice as much. And by 2080, we'll be spending almost 20% of our GDP. So any trend that can't continue won't. We have to reform these programs, and so the Democrats are also equally at fault. <clears throat> 